Hi there, it's Annie from the Youth Room at the BB Library, and I'm so glad to see you for another virtual story time. We'll read stories together, sing songs, and do a craft together as well. Did you know that this weekend was the first day of spring? I'm really excited for spring because we're gonna start seeing buds on trees, flowers and different plants are gonna start growing, lots of animals have their babies, the days get longer, the sun is awake longer in the day, and lots of people spend more time outside. Maybe you spent some time outside this weekend. I know I did. <laughs> So for today, I wanted to share with you a couple of great stories all about springtime. The first is Spring, an alphabet acrostic, and this was written by Stephen Schnurr, and it was illustrated by Leslie Evans. And another story I wanted to share with you today is William Wakes Up. And this one was written by Linda Ashman, and the drawings were done by Chuck Graunick. So... Since we're reading about different things that happen in the springtime, I thought for our craft today, we could create a certain activity that some people like to do in the spring. And that is flying a kite. So we'll make our own kite and we're just gonna be using some construction paper, string, and a little bit of tissue paper to make our kites. So to make this craft, we are going to need some construction paper in any color that you like. We are going to need crinkle crinkle, a little bit of tissue paper. If you don't have any tissue paper, you can also use construction paper for this as well. Lots of different ways that you can do this. We are also going to need some string. I have a little bit of yarn right here. Ribbon also works great for this. We are going to need some coloring utensils. I picked crayons for mine. You might want to use crayons or maybe markers or colored pencils. We are going to need a pair of scissors. And last but not least, we are going to need some tape and some glue for this. And we will make our flying kites for the springtime after we read our stories and sing a couple of songs together. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. And let's begin by singing a song together. Um, I always like to start by singing, hello friends. That's a great way to say hello to all of our friends at story time, right? And we're gonna use a little bit of American Sign Language to help us sing this one. So I'll show you the different signs and then we'll go ahead and sing together. So the first sign that we need is, hello. And you can see I'm just taking my hand and giving a little salute like that, hello. Friends, I'm going to take my two pointer fingers and I'm going to tap them one on top of the other. Friends, it's time. I'm going to give my wrist a tap, 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 tap for time to say. I point to my lips for say. Hello. And salute again for hello. Ready to sing? Let's start. Hello, friends. Hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Great job. Now we got to use our hands a little bit, but let's go ahead and uh, let's give him another little wake up. We'll start by waking him up with some Claps, and then we'll wake up a couple other body parts too. Ready? We wake up our hands with a clap, 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 clap. We wake up our hands with a clap, 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 and we wiggle our waggles away. We wake up our heads with a nod, 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 nod. We wake up our heads with a nod, 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 and we wiggle our waggles away. We wake up our feet with a stomp, 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 stomp. We wake up our feet with a stomp, 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 and we wiggle our waggles away. Let's do one big wiggle to get all of those wiggles out. Ready? <gasps> Phew. Well, I'm feeling nice and awake now. What about you? Let's go ahead and we'll jump right into our first story for today. And our first one we're reading is Spring. 
an alphabet acrostic. And an acrostic is a type of poem. So this is kind of a cool story. This author, Stephen Schnur, is going to use each letter of the alphabet to say a different thing that we see in the springtime. So for example, the letter A at the beginning of the alphabet is for the month of April. A is for April. And then he's gonna take each letter in the world April and he is going to make a poem that way. So this is a pretty cool way to tell a story and to write poetry as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Spring, an alphabet acrostic by Stephen Schnur, illustrated by Leslie Evans. A, April. After days of pouring rain, the last ice and snow finally leave the earth. You can see all the letters of the word April here. A, P, R, I, L. That spells April. So we got our A word. Let's see what our B word is. B is for buds, buds on the trees. Beyond our upstairs window, dead looking branches suddenly spring to life. And now we have C is for calf. A calf is a baby cow. Cows, heavy with milk, loll among their newborn, licking them as they feed. So those are some of the baby animals we get to see in the springtime, baby cows, calves. D is for dawn. Day breaks early now and quickly warms after a cool night. And E is for eggs. Egrets, ducks, and geese nest in the marsh grass, waiting for their shells to hatch. F is for frog, ribbit. From the mud, ringing the old cow pond, come grunts, whistles, and ribbit croaks. G is for grass. Green leaves overhead, a rug of green underfoot, and the air between sweet with the green smell of spring. H is for hopscotch. Hair swaying, each girl leaps on one foot past the first space, crouches and springs once, twice, three times, returns and collects her marker, then jumps home. I is for infant, a baby. In the nursery, a new baby sleeps while family and neighbors gather together to celebrate. J is for jungle. Jammed between an unpainted fence and the neighbor's garage, old lumber, tangled vines, and evergreen saplings. K is for kites, just like our craft today. Knees pumping, we run into the wind, strings taut, eyes fixed on the sky. So watch those kites fly high. L is for ladder. 
leaning against the house, Dad, covered with dust and paint from ear to ear, climbs to the next rung. Dad's painting the house. M is for May, the month of May. Mild days, apple blossoms, and yellow daffodils. The yellow daffodils are my favorites. N is for nest. Nestled under the eaves, a song-filled arc of twigs and grass. O is for outside. On a hill under flowering trees, we sit in the shade, dreaming and eating berries. Do you ever like to eat berries in the springtime? I always like to eat raspberries. There's lots of great berries we can eat though. Blueberries, blackberries, strawberries. P is for parade. Parents, children, and a row of drummers march alongside a dazzling red fire engine. Q is for quintuplets. Do you know what quintuplets are? Quintuplets are when five babies are born at the same time. And in this case, these babies are baby cats, kittens. Quick, count up the new kittens. One in a box near the furnace, twins under the porch, a little white-eared one on the stairs, and this calico sleeper in the laundry basket. Can you see all of those kittens? Let's see if we can find all five. One, two, three, four, five. R is for raft. Rounding a bend, we float downstream on logs tied tightly together. S is for seeds. Sown in freshly plowed earth they grow, each day a little nearer to the sun. T is for twilight. Tonight, when the light fades in long purple streaks and insects begin to chirp, We'll gather on the hill to watch the fiery sky. As they're watching the sunset at twilight. U is for umpire. And what sport is everybody playing here? Do you know what sport that is? I see a bat and a cap and home base. Looks like they're playing baseball. So someone has to play the umpire to catch the ball. Under a rising moon, two teams play ball in a dusky field ringed by early corn. V is for Venus the planet Venus. Visible in the eastern sky, now that summer is nearly upon us, the morning star. So we can see the planet Venus in the sky during the spring. It looks like a star because it's so tiny and far away. Can you spot Venus in this picture? Yeah. There it is. Looks pretty small from Earth. 
W is for wheat. White June heat begins to ripen each green and trembling stalk. Xing. This is really crossing, but sometimes the letter X looks like a cross. So sometimes we use Xing to say crossing. X's with railroad crossing in faded letters stand guard near the grade crossing. And who's crossing that road there? Looks like a chicken. I wonder why it's crossing the road. Y is for young. Yellow goslings turning brown. One lamb joins the flock. Up in the oak, nest emptying, all the newborns growing. And we have a couple different babies here. We have the baby goslings, little goose, a little lamb, and a baby. Z is for Zenia. Zucchinis and eggplants are greening now that summer is finally here and the hot sun is high overhead. So there you have spring from A to Z. Well, thank you so much for reading that with me. Lots of great poems in there all about the springtime. Now, before we do our next book, I'm gonna get some of my wiggles out. Do you wanna get some wiggles out with me? I'm gonna start by wiggling my fingers a little bit. Can you wiggle your fingers? And what about your toes? Can you give your toes a little wiggle? And how about your shoulders? I'm gonna wiggle my shoulders a little bit. Can you wiggle your shoulders? What about your nose? Can you wiggle your nose a little bit? Let's try putting them all together, ready? I wiggle my fingers. I wiggle my toes. I wiggle my shoulders. And I wiggle my nose. Phew. Now all the wiggles are out of me and I'm as still as still can be. Let's go ahead and read our next story. This next one is William Wakes Up. So winter is over, and William and his friends are waking up from their winter nap. And this book is by Linda Ashman, and the drawings were done by Chuck Gronick. On a quiet morning, sleepy and still, William looks out on a moss-covered hill. He hears a faint and distant tune. He says, my friend will be here soon. It's been a long and wintry wait. We need a cake to celebrate. Wake up, it's spring. Today's the day. A special guest is on the way. Rise and shine, no time to lose. One rolls out, four others snooze. I'm up, I'm out, I'm wide awake. I'll help you bake a welcome cake. So four animals are still snoozing and one, a little chipmunk, is awake. They stir, they whir, they mix and pour. Then Chickmunk conks out on the floor. There's way too much for us to do. We'd better wake the others too. So they have to go wake up the rest of their friends. Wake up, it's spring, today's the day. A special guest is on the way. Rise and shine, no time to lose. One rolls out. Three others snooze. 
I cannot sleep a minute more. I'll gladly clean the kitchen floor. And who's going to clean the kitchen floor? Looks like the porcupine. They bake, they scrub, they wipe and scrape. Says porcupine, oh, I'm out of shape. There's way too much for us to do. We'd better wake the others too. Wake up, it's spring. Today's the day. A special guest is on the way. Rise and shine, no time to lose. One rolls out, two others snooze. A special guest arriving soon. I'll tidy up the living room. They dust, they shine, they fluff and buff till Groundhog groans, Ugh, I've had enough. There's way too much for us to do. We'd better wake the others too. All right, let's see if they can wake the others up. Wake up, it's spring, today's the day. A special guest is on the way. Does one roll out? Oh yes, you bet. And the other? Nope, not yet. So bear's awake. Oh dear, says Bear, it seems I'm late. May I help you decorate? They frost, they squeeze, they paste and paint. Then Bear sits down. <sighs> I'm feeling faint. There's way too much for us to do. Perhaps Raccoon can help us too? Do you think they'll be able to wake up Raccoon? Hmm. Well, let's have a look and find out. They gather round the rumply bed, then pat Raccoon's still dozy head. Hey, Raccoon, pitch in, help out. They tug his tail, they nudge his snout. Raccoon just snores and burrows deep. But is he really sound asleep? Is Raccoon really asleep? Hmm. Well, let's keep reading and find out. Just outside, they hear some flapping, chirping, tweeting, tap, tap, tapping. Then a whistle, loud and clear. William says, my friend is here. They throw the front door open wide. Welcome, Bluebird, come inside. We baked a cake, it's just for you, but we might like a sliver too. Raccoon bolts up. Did I hear cake? Don't start without me. I'm awake. <sighs> says Chipmunk. That's not fair. He hasn't helped at all, says Bear. This isn't right. It isn't nice. He shouldn't get a single slice. So Raccoon didn't help out and everyone's feeling a little upset that now he wants cake when he didn't help at all to bake. Raccoon looks sad. He hangs his head. I'm sorry that I stayed in bed. I'd like to help now if I could and have some cake. It looks so good. Says William, there's more work to do. Bluebird needs a building crew. Oh, yes, he's right. I do, Raccoon. My friends will be here very soon. 
We'll need new nest, no time to lose. Then I will help, I will not snooze. But first, says William, grab a plate. Right now, it's time to celebrate. There they go on their picnic. Welcome friends, welcome sun, welcome springtime, everyone. They threw a whole little party to say welcome to the springtime and all of the birds coming back to build their nest. And even Raccoon woke up and helped out in the end. <laughs> well, thank you so much for reading those great stories with me. How about we sing a couple of songs now before we do our craft? For our first song, why don't we start with the Four Seasons song? Um, I really like this song because it helps me to remember the four different seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. And it also helps me to remember different kinds of weather that happen during each of the seasons. So let's go ahead and we'll sing this two times together. Ready? Winter, spring, summer, fall, there are seasons for in all, weather changes sun and rain and snow. Leaves fall down and flowers grow. Let's sing it together again. Ready? Winter, spring, summer, fall. There are seasons for in all. Weather changes, sun and rain and snow. Leaves fall down and flowers grow. Great job! That's always a fun way to remember the different types of weather that we get to see. Because each season has pretty different weather, huh? Well, another thing that we get to see in the springtime is seeds coming up from the ground and growing into things like plants, flowers, and trees. So for this next one, let's move our bodies a little bit. We'll do a rhyme called Be a Seed. And I'm going to put my chair to the side for this. Stand up. Now we're going to start by getting low to the ground and we'll be a round little seed. And then we're going to sprout up and we'll shake our leaves and stretch our branches out to become a tree. Ready? Let's start. Get low to the ground like a little seed. Be a seed, small and round. Sprout, sprout, sprout up from the ground. Shake your leaves for all to see. Stretch your arms out, you're a tree. Let's try that again, ready? We'll get down low to be a little seed. Be a seed. Small and round, sprout, sprout, sprout up from the ground. Shake your leaves for all to see. Stretch your arms out, you're a tree. <laughs> Great job. Let's try that one more time. This is always a nice one to really stretch our bodies out and move a bit. One more time, ready? Get low down to be a little seed in the ground. Be a seed, small and round. Sprout, sprout, sprout up from the ground. Shake your leaves for all to see. Stretch your arms out, you're a tree. Great job. <laughs> That's always a fun one. Well, now we moved our bodies a bit with that one. How about for our next one? We use our hands a little bit and we do open, shut them. Ready? You can listen to my words and follow along with my actions for open, shut them. Ready? Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them. Open. 
up and shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them. Right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide, ah, your little mouth. But do not let them in. One more time, ready? Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them. Right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide, ah, your little mouth. But do not let them in. <laughs> Great job! <laughs> that one's always a pretty silly one, huh? Well, let's sing one last song together before we do our kite craft for today. And for our last song, we'll sing Goodbye, Friends. Now, this is pretty similar to the first song we sang together, Hello, Friends. But this time, instead of saying hello, we're gonna say goodbye. And we're gonna use some American Sign Language to help us sing this one, too. So the different signs that we need for this one are, well, the first sign we need is goodbye. And I'm just gonna take my hand and give a little wave for that. Goodbye. Friends, I'm gonna take my two pointer fingers and tap them one on top of the other. Friends. It's time, tap my wrist for time, to say, point to my lips for say, goodbye and give a little wave with my hand again for goodbye. Ready to sing? Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Great job, thank you so much for singing with me. Let's go ahead and we'll make our kite crafts together now. So first I'll remind you of the different things that we need to make our kite craft. First thing we will need is some construction paper in any color that you like. Next, we are going to need some tissue paper. This can also be in any color that you like as well going to need something to color with. Uh, I pick crayons. You might want to use markers or colored pencils, whatever you like best. Need a little bit of string yarn or ribbon, whatever you prefer. I picked yarn for mine. We're going to need a pair of scissors. And last but not least, we're going to need some glue and a little bit of tape for this. So let's go ahead and we'll get started by making our kites. Well, first off, to start, we're gonna need to cut out a kite. And we're gonna use a nice big diamond shape for this. So for my kite, I made a pink one there. This time I think I'm gonna make a green one, my green paper. So you can use your scissors and cut out a nice big diamond shape to be your kite. And then you'll wanna take your crayons and we can draw in the structure of the kite. It looks like a little T right across it. Um, I'm gonna use a little crayon for this one. And you also might want to use a ruler to help you draw some nice straight lines. I always have a lot of trouble drawing a straight line without a ruler, so I like to use a little helper for that one. Then you'll have your little T Cross your kite like that. Now we need to cut out a couple other shapes, which are one, two, clouds. So I picked white for my clouds. I need one, two clouds. Now I'm gonna get a big piece of paper to glue these onto. And I used sort of a teal color last time. I'm gonna use a little purple piece of paper this time. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is glue on 
one, two, my two clouds. And for these, it's okay too. I'm gonna stick mine so they're sticking a little bit off of the paper there. And you can put them on however you want. You can also make as many clouds as you want. Maybe you want just one cloud in your sky, or maybe you have a nice bright sunny day with no clouds. Or maybe you have lots and lots of clouds. <laughs> so you can get pretty creative and decide what you want to do for your kite picture. So I've got my glue on there. I'm just sticking my clouds down. So I've got my clouds in my purple sky. <laughs> and next, I'm going to need to put my kite in here. But before I do that, I'm going to get a little piece of yarn and I'm going to go ahead and tape that right to the back of my kite. So this is, this is called the tail of the kite. Sometimes you might see these with um, bows on them or ribbons to decorate. So that's what we're gonna do with ours. So I'm just putting my little piece of yarn right on the back and I have a piece of tape that I'm gonna use just to hold that yarn right in place. And I used a pretty long piece because I'm gonna have it hang off of the edge of the paper, similarly to how the clouds are sticking a little bit off the paper. So now I'm going to put, whoops. <laughs> You can tell I haven't glued my kite on yet because it just fell off. So I'm gonna glue my kite on right there. And I'm gonna just put this glue right on the back of my kite here. And make sure it doesn't go flying off the paper. I've got my glue. And I'm gonna press my kite down make it look like it is soaring in the sky amongst the clouds. Now, I need to get my tail of the kite in place. So I'm gonna sort of drape it a little bit on the paper and it won't stay in place by itself. So now I'm gonna use a little bit of glue again. And the way that I like to do this is I like to take the glue and trace where I want the tail of the kite to go. And this is good to use both glue and a little bit of tape here. So you can see I have sort of the uh, purple glue. So now I'm gonna press the yarn for my kite just along the areas where I traced this trail for the tail of the kite. And sometimes it can be a little bit fussy and a little hard to get it to stay in place. And if you have any trouble with that, you can always take a little piece of tape and stick it. I like to do it right on sort of the bends and the corners. And I decided to make my tail be in a sort of zigzag pattern, but you can make it in any sort of direction that you like. I always think it's sort of fun to shape it all around the paper. And you can see I have a nice little tail hanging off there. Now, I'm gonna make some bows for the tail of my kite. And to make these bows, I'm gonna use a little bit of tissue paper here. So what I want the bows to look like is this. This is one that's already made. And to do that, I'm gonna take, I'm using red for these, and I'm just gonna make the tissue paper a little square. And this is fun, this is really great for helping us use our fingers, develop our motor skills, and also we get to sort of press and twist the paper, but we also have to be kind of gentle with it because tissue paper is pretty easy to rip. I've definitely ripped a lot of it, <laughs> but that's okay if you rip it. You can always try again. So I'm gonna just pinch this down in the center right there. And now I'm gonna take the two sides and I'm gonna twist them a couple of times like that. And then I have a little bow. And I'm gonna do that with a couple more. I'm gonna make four bows, but you can make however many bows that you want. So I'm pinching down in the middle of my square and I'm taking the two sides 
and I'm twisting, twisting away. And I like to twist it a couple of times to make sure it stays in place. All right, we'll do the last one here. Pinch down in the middle and twist, twist, and twist. Now I need to glue these in place. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my glue and I really put it on nice and thick where I want my first bow to go. I'm gonna take my bow and what I like to do is just get a little bit of glue on the back of that bear. And then I'm going to press it right onto where my yarn is. And I have one bow for my kite. I'm just gonna do the same thing with the other bows that I have. Put a little dot there and a little bit of glue on the back and press it down flat. You can use any color tissue paper you want for this too. I picked red for mine, but you might have different colors at your house. And sometimes there's even different patterns on tissue paper too. So that can be pretty fun. Speaking of patterns, you can also make different patterns for your kite. I made mine just plain colors, but maybe your kite has polka dots, stripes, maybe it has pictures of racing cars on it or flowers. So you can get pretty creative with the sort of kite that you might like to fly in. <laughs> All right, last one. So I have my glue on the string and you can see I have a little bit of glue right on the back of my last bow. And I'm gonna press it down right in place. And there we go. I have my kite with my clouds and my little tissue paper bows, all set to fly on a beautiful spring day. <laughs> well, thank you so much for spending time with me today and for reading those great stories, singing songs, and creating our own kite crafts together. I had a great time with you and I will see you again uh, in a couple of weeks. You can join my friend Heidi uh, shortly for PJ Storytime. That's going to be on Wednesday on... Oh, I am ahead of myself. I actually will see you next week. <laughs> um, and the week after for um, April 6th or 7th, you'll be able to join my friend Heidi for PJ Storytime. So I will see you next week after all. <laughs> Thanks so much for spending some time with me. See you soon.